Hi everybody, welcome to Aki Marathon. We are in New York City. But we're not here to talk about iron pay, nor are we here to talk about big Yag Angles. We're not here to talk about uh, the shared bundy Linsk video. We're here to talk about Thomas. Thomas had the week. Boop, boop. At Aki Marathon, we decided to start talking about architecture and celebrating. Not being negative. Because there's too many negative channels, there's so many memes and everything just... And it's too easy to be negative. Buildings are so hard to make. Buildings don't want to be made. Mm. Things want to fall down, they don't want to be constructed. It's entropy, it's the law of the universe. So we don't want to be negative about buildings. So let's go talk about something else. <laughs> It is better than I thought it would be. The uh -huh. reflection, by the quality, the brass colored, shiny reflection back to the public space. Yeah. Something really lovely about that. And you see the movement, you see yourself. And people are sitting up against it Yeah. as well. So Thomas, for so long has been like, probably England's most celebrated living designer. Yeah, well he did the London bus. Yeah, which things. was yeah. awesome. That bridge, that original, that Rolly bridge is the first time I came across him. But oh, that was his. Yeah. He did the, the ferry building with the seeds, the British pavilion, of, amongst other things. Yeah, which looked amazing. You've been there? No. Oh, I haven't been there. It looks amazing. But he's been a bit of a punching bag over the last few years. One of the big reasons is because of that thing there. Yeah? A lot of people are criticising it. It's called the Vessel, by the way. Well, it's nicknamed the Vessel. Uh, do you know anything about this? I, no, I don't. I okay. don't know anything about it, except that I don't feel good about it. <laughs> well, this is Hudson Yards. So this was the old railway stockyard for the Long Island trains. So they built over the railways for the platform, and they have privatized all these, you know, with these development, privatized apartment and buildings and so commercial. maybe in an Australian context, Docklands in Melbourne? Kind of, yeah, yeah. Okay. Built over train lines. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, but this is the public space. This is like the, the public square they have. It's actually surprisingly well used, I guess, on a, on a Saturday. Yeah. But this was like the crowning jewel for it all, which is kind of a bit strange, because it is a thing you have to go upstairs and enjoy the view, yeah. I guess. It's gigantic. How much do they spend on it? 200 million. And it seems like a gimmick. It is a folly. But it's not open at the moment. No. Why is that? Well, there were three suicides. What? Yeah, it's, it's, it was open in 2019. It was closed in 2011. There yeah. were three suicides. Okay. Um, people just jumped off. It does feel like a sacrificial cauldron though, doesn't it? <laughs> In the heart of it, it just feels horrible. It feels like you're just being, like it's, it's as though you're about to be cooked alive. Cauldron's the right word. It's a cauldron, yeah. yeah. It's a sacrificial cauldron. And uh, so they, they closed it for half a year, I think, something like that, and they reopened it. Within a month, someone jumped off again, so it's closed indefinitely. So it is a bit of a folly. I mean, some people have sort of called it even like the, the Eiffel Tower of Manhattan. Okay. Well, Eiffel Tower was a temporary structure. A lot of people forget that. Did you notice the building next door? Yeah. Dylan Scafidio. New York practice? Yeah. Dylan Scafidio Renfro. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It's the third partner now. This is interesting. And that's on wheels. Yeah. That's it, a huge bubbly structure that slides. So it has extra shed space once it's moved, I think. I haven't seen it. Let's go look at that before I say something about this, that is against Aki Mar Marathon policy. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's literally called The Shed. Yeah, I didn't make it up. The Shed. The Bloomberg building. Look at these big ass wheels. For The Shed, that rolls out and take up the public space and become an art gallery. And that's right next to the vessel. So it's pretty hot 
in New York. So we just went and got hydrated. So I apologize if I slur. <laughs> but uh, welcome to the High Line. So good. The High Line is uh, literally, you can see the, the shed. It kind of terminates here. What's the High Line? Look at the ground, it'll tell you. It used to be train tracks. And Dylan and Scafidio. Renfro. Hmm? And Renfro. Uh, have done an amazing job in turning public infrastructure into public space. It's amazing. Especially in places like New York where parkland is limited. Of course, they have the wonderful, huge Central Park. It's the High Line. So we are on a train line that's elevated from ground. And the transition to this level, I didn't even notice. Suddenly we were just on it. And that is remarkable. I well, think. as I said, that was built over train lines, so that yeah. just stitched right into it. Yeah. But this train line is a wonderful play of the train line, but also all this green spaces. Look at all this stuff. And it weaves around instead of just being dead straight. Yep. It's been influential in lots of urban spaces around Sydney. You even have the goods line. Near the Geary building. Yes. 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 Check this out. This is incredible. This pink tree here, which is amazing, is actually straight on axes. Oh, yeah. I can't remember which street, but like you look down the street and you just go, that's a goddamn pink tree in the middle of the street. Love it. Floating. Because we're bridging across the road right now. Like in New York, you're always constantly crossing roads. Yeah. This is elevated above all of them. Uh, this... And yeah, we're heading that way to, to see the other Thomas Heatherwick project which is the purpose of this video, by the way. Oh, we're, in the, we're in the city of bricks, steel and high-rises, and we've just come across a glue lamb bridge, a timber bridge. How hot is that? We love timber because concrete and steel produces so much carbon where timber sequests it. Sequests, it buries it into its own structure. This is beautiful. I did not expect this at all in New York. This is not the language of New York, but it's so beautiful. I love this bit, how it just hangs out. The extra yeah. gun. A beautiful little stop to, uh, spot, a spot to just stop and look at the rest of Manhattan. And then at the end of this bridge, a little timber bench seat. Oh, just yeah. to stop and reorient as you head down towards Heatherwick and uh, Diller and Scafidio's uh, shed. Even the undercroft is awesome because it provides a, like a shaded walkway for people. Underneath, yeah. Look at the greenery, That's... look at the, they're actual trees, elevated. See the amount of depth they've got in the structure so they can actually get a fair amount of soil to make sure that they can establish full grown trees instead of just bushes. This bit here is actually a stitching element because that's that steel one over there. That's the original. Oh, so that's stitching between the original iron train track. This is a new element. And yeah. then this is, oh, great. Okay. And then we'll rejoin it over there. Oh. Kev, look, the timber is actually chamfered. So it doesn't have a flat top. Actually the same at the top as well. It doesn't have a flat top. So that means the water hits it and just runs straight off instead of pooling and eroding. Eroding? And um, what's the word? Uh, Rotting. I've had beer, it's his fault. And Long Island iced tea. God. And uh, a frosé. Stay hydrated, people. Yeah. You want, you want some bad news? What's that? We went the wrong way. You know how at Archie Marathon we know everything and we never get anything wrong? We always get everything wrong. And we went the wrong way. We've got to go back this way. It's fine. Just come with us. Anybody that's been one of our tours, this happens a bit. <laughs> Do you know what it's called? It's called serendipity. And we love that word. Train line. Look at it, it just terminates. I love it how the sleepers kind of just, they change, they dissolve into the landscape. Yeah, or that they mutate oh, and become a bench. And then they become the bench. Oh, that's great. So that's just the paver wrapped up. How could's that? Is that a question or a statement? It's always a question, but there's only one answer. Check this bit out. Oh, 
So in the ongoing Arky Marathon series of get one good idea and let it do multiple things, that's what we're seeing yeah. over and over. They've got a concrete paver and timber, and then they're letting it evolve and warp into other things. Awesome. But as merging of the two lines, they just go, yeah, you know what? Let's just merge the seats as well. Oh, it does it with the paving as well. Oh, yeah, wow. That's beautiful. I think that's turning a sharp corner right here. These you are... can see, like, we actually go through buildings. Oh. Oh, so that's the old train line. Yeah. Whoa. And so along the High Line, there are different architects that have worked on different projects along here as well. There are little pockets on either side for plants or for seating. Like the videos, guys. Greenery. Enjoy the, enjoy the videos. Like the videos, guys. Greenery. Enjoy the, enjoy the videos. That was cool. Yes, we just uh, bumped into some uh, viewers, fans. <laughs> the the same thing happened in Madrid. Yeah, but that particular fan in Madrid stopped us and said, uh, you're insane trying to tour Spain during <laughs> summer. We did it anyway. <laughs> it's actually cooler though here in some ways. I'm yeah. sweating a lot more here. Yeah, but um, yeah, Brandon and Mark, they run a practice locally and they stopped us and told us all about the High Line and how, re how much re rejuvenation it's created. That was so lovely. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, thank you. Beautiful people. Thank you, wanted on camera. And they said Zaha's just up here, and I've just noticed Zaha. Hi, Zaha. Huh? Sorry, I'm waving to a building. <laughs> I, I Hi, deceased Zaha. It's really interesting what they were saying. So this was an, a rail line that was disused and full of weeds, and it's had a public injection of cash to turn into this incredible civic space. And they said what a catalyst that was to just grow this area. They said it was an absolutely dead and sometimes scary area. And now look behind us, and got like Zaha did with these probably incredibly expensive apartments. Yeah, there's um, actually quite a few architects design stuff dotted along here. Um, and, you know, it's probably far too much for any of us to afford, but I think the lesson here, though, is that a, a strategic investment in public infrastructure, look at the amount of people that are passing us, like, creates incredible public space, and then that can cause incredible urban rejuvenation. It may cause extreme gentrification, which I think we may be witnessing. Because <laughs> none, I bet you, you guys can't. I definitely can't afford a Zara did apartment. Um, but this is not expensive. The High Line does not look like an expensive intervention to me. No. No, not at all. But Compared it's, to the 200 million uh, vessel. Yeah, gimmicks like that. So, investment in public infrastructure, governments, please do it. Because look what it does. It actually gets the economy going. You guys love that. But it creates human spaces. And it's a bit of an icon. Like, the tourists come here. The High Line, New York. Mm. How often do you go to a urban park when you travel? Like normal tourists, not like architects who are weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool, isn't it, Kev, how much, like, the path, they haven't just gone and paved it all. It's actually dominated by green space. Yeah. And there's a lot of people walking along, but it doesn't feel cr cramped to me. Is it to you? No, not at all. Well, it does kind of feel pinched, but there are respites from that. Yeah, yeah. Well, those little bits where you can stop and lay down and read a book and things like mm -hmm. that. The other thing that I love too is instead of the paving just stopping, they've actually introduced this different type of paver that acts as a little wedge. Sort of peters out. Yeah, peters out. So the paving gives up and surrenders to the, uh, to the actual planting. Look at it. Yeah, and also weaves around too. Remember, we were just on one side now, the weaves to the other side. So yeah. it's constantly, it's not just a dead straight line. So it's like a hierarchy of like, instead of saying it's pavement and then maybe we'll fit in a garden. It's almost as though it's garden. And you know what? We'll create a few little places for you to walk. And that's a Neil Denari building there. That one? Yeah. So that Neil was... Denari was quite influential in the 90s. That's one of his rare built buildings. Is that painted on or is that real structure? It looks painted on. Uh, but there is is there structure? I think there's structure behind it. No, some of it. I don't. Yeah, some of it I think there is, but not much. And even the balconies, they look like they're these organic shapes, but behind it's just a boxy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, the decoration. promise of the decoration. Decoration's okay, people. It's okay. Don't panic. 
Look at the trees. Yep, far out. They're good size, aren't they? That's where elevated on an old train track. Remember that? Yeah. It actually makes it quite pleasant to walk compared to constantly being stopped and having to navigate and deal with all the shit that is New York City. And it's cooler because of the planting, I reckon. The evaporative cooling, it's dropped the temperature. It's been pretty hard, hasn't it, kept getting around New York? But well, this is... the temperature has dropped, I think. Oh. There's a storm coming. You don't reckon it's just the planting? Probably a bit of both. Yeah. That, Andrew, looks like a Thomas Heatherwick. It does, doesn't it? It is... looks like the one in South Africa. Is... Hey, peeps, is that a Heatherwick? Can you leave a comment? <coughs> yes? No? And that is a Jean Nouvel. Ah. It has the small openings on the other sides and then more faceted but glass facing the south. To the river? Or? Facing, why is it facing south? Yeah. No, that's not a river, that's the sun. What are you doing? Look at, you, look at this. Get one good idea and find ways to solve many problems. How good is this? It's exactly the same thing, they've just flooded it. Bit of play on water. Oh, it's hot and this is great. In popular culture, like New York is the place to fear. It's gonna f you up. You need to you need to battle, you need to put your bat your armor on before. I survived New York. We saw that t-shirt. We saw that little old lady with that t-shirt. Yes. I survived New York. That's in, that. That's actually kind of an amazing moment for me because it's it like take your shoes off, like and, and play around. And that's not the New York that's projected to the world. No, New York seems to be quite a hostile place, right? Just in general, culture. general popular yeah impression. Yeah. Although the Brooklyn hipsters go, what? <laughs> it's all hugs and love. Yeah, we're talking to you, Roman. <laughs> um, that was great. Island. Oh, that's Heather Week. Yeah. Hi, Thomas. So we're leaving the High Line now. Descending into the bowels of New York. <laughs> Quite high off the ground, really. Quite a lively place. A lot of people. So we're at the island. The little island, as it's called. So the third Heather Week? Yeah. We saw the basket case. <laughs> the vessel. That. We saw the... Who's the, the basket case? Well, we can vote down in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we saw the housing, the, what's that called? The lantern? The lantern. And this, so New York's just got a hard on for uh, Heather Week. Um, this, um, this seems pretty amazing. Well, this is actually public, unlike the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. So it's... you look throughout the world and there's reclaimed land. You look mm. at Singapore, half of Singapore is a reclaimed land, which is used for speculative development. This is to create public space, yeah? Yeah. Well, this is a public park engaging with the water. This was a pier that was destroyed uh, during Hurricane Sandy. Right. And so it's a new idea of how can you actually create a public space for engagement with the water. And I think what's brilliant about this is not just an island yeah. per se, they are on piers. These, each of these is a pod. It's a tulip shaped thing. Some of them sink as deep as 61 meters into bedrock. So but, each, yeah. each one's structurally separate. There's kind of something that reminds me of um, Heather Week's um, London Olympics. The flame was made up of individual flames that came together on sticks. But you see, the way one of the entries is actually underneath through it. So oh, yeah. as someone who loved to go fishing in all piers, just going underneath and just, just between the water and the, and the structure above, it's actually quite an amazing experience. So I'm really looking forward to that engagement with the water because often these waterfront ones are just like, like this. It's like, yep, there's a waterfront, there's an edge, that's it. Cast the line off. Yeah, this is quite an amazing yeah. lifted up island, really. Yeah. And as a shape, kind of goes like that. There, you can, you'll find there's amphitheaters, the there different kind of landscape that happens. So the one criticism I've heard is like, this is great investing in public space. How about we invest in public housing? Because globally we have a shortage of public housing. It is an interesting problem. The High Line shows as well, where that has rejuvenated an area 
but it's also gentrified an area. So it's taken it out of the price point of people that have lived there anyway. So it's renewed, but it's also isolated. It's an interesting problem. I like it, but I get that issue. Like maybe just build homes. But it is great to have an experiment in the way how you would engage with water more than just a conventional. Especially as a public space, whereas a the city basket as, case... As, <laughs> the basket case. <laughs> well, a city like New York, it's the most populated city in the world. No, after, no one of the most populated cities in the world. And uh, an investment in public space is always well. Yes. I don't... Sorry. I don't know if it's still a thing. The vessel, you were saying. Well, that's, that's a private speculative development that when it was open, you had to pay for, did you? I don't know, actually. But it feels almost like it's not... We well, talk about spatial syntax, right? It doesn't feel like you can just go and wander up there. If this is a 24-7 space? Uh, well, it's open till midnight. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let's go check it out, Kev Kev, because I want to... Have you been on it? Nope. Let's explore. So we're about to go in and uh, we're being evacuated. We were just talking about an investment in public space. It is, it is seriously five minutes to five do, on a Saturday. Do you know why they're being evacuated though? No. Lightning. What? Look upwards. What? Yeah, there's lightning storms they're seeing. So they're, they're clearing it. If the lightning storms within 10 miles, they have to close it apparently. Okay, so it's normally open till 12. Yes. Okay. So they're evacuating because of lightning precautions. Well... Which is kind of odd because you've got buildings that's way freaking taller than this. Yeah, it's a bunch of people up there. Yeah. Kev, if I go out... Do they know how lightnings work? <laughs> hey, look at that thing. Yeah, there's it's, people... It's Freedom Tower, you know, what's it going to strike? Oh, <laughs> uh, there's two ways I want to go out. One of two ways. Either getting eaten by a shark while I surf. I'm a terrible surfer, but I love it. Or being at a Starkitex building and getting hit by lightning. <laughs> and they're denying me that, and it's not fair. We're going to wait out the storm, apparently. You know what? I think this is a long episode, and we might just like wrap it up as a failure. <laughs> I come. really want to see that, though. We'll come back another time. We love you guys. Stay tuned. Leave a comment. Have you been here? I want to see it inside. We'll get... Oh, okay. That's one thing I really want to see. We're going to stop the episode. He's going to have a tantrum. Yeah. See you in the next one. Love you. It's okay. Don't touch me. Somebody you can get to cuddle as a child. <laughs>